Hey everybody, Zach here from Bluebot Tech. So today, what we're gonna be going over is how to migrate your old Z-Wave setup to the new Z-Wave JS integration. Now the new Z-Wave JS integration is what Home Assistant as a kind of community is going to be moving forward with. So we really wanted to get something out there to help you guys migrate your old stuff to the new Z-Wave JS. It's extremely easy, it's really not that bad. Um, we have a video out on how to do Zigbee and Z-Wave from scratch, so check that out if you're starting fresh. Otherwise, let's get started. Okay, before we get started, I'm gonna go ahead in here and shut off the old Z-Wave network. So, configure, and stop network. Okay, so the old Z-Wave network is stopped, so hopefully that shouldn't cause any issues. Okay, so as you can see, after we added our network key and everything, we do get the pop-up of created our configuration for Z-Wave JS. They found the following devices, which is what we gave it. We can put these in an area, so my stick is in the basement. Not that that should matter. Um, node 9. Tough to say what that is right now, so we're going to skip that. Okay, so we can see our Z-Wave JS is now populated here. We have two devices. Node 9. Hmm. So, I have a feeling this is my Z-Wave lock. And this may be a, a fun troubleshooting session because we may have to start up that old network. Um, get that lock to forget that it was ever connected to a Z-Wave network and start kind of from fresh. Okay, so I actually didn't have to do much. Um, of course, I wasn't recording when I did it, but as you can see back here on the uh, integrations page, uh, my Z-Wave JS is now showing two devices and six entities. I just ran upstairs real quick to my front door. That's where my Z-Wave lock is. And I went and just kind of woke it up and what that seemed to have done was triggered some updates and you know across the, the z-wave network so it's still showing as node 9 which you know we can adjust that but as you can see we are now seeing the battery level current lock mode and I just tested this this does unlock and lock just like it's supposed to um, you know low battery level is normal so what are our disabled entities so sensor none and alarm type so those should be showing up they showed up in my previous z-wave configuration i'm gonna kind of play with tweaking and see if we can get this working if not however um, i do have a feeling that removing the lock using whatever programming code your your lock provider um, gave you and re-adding it will most likely correct this issue most z-wave items aren't this difficult um, I'm showing a lock because they tend to be the more difficult ones, especially since they are um, a secure piece of equipment. They do require that, that security key. So real quick, we'll go in here and kind of show you around. So configuration, favorite devices. Now you'll notice this is a little different than prior where we had the add node secure and remove node secure. Here it's simply just add node. And as you can see, add a Z-Wave node and we can just toggle this little button if we want to add a secure node. Okay, I hope that was super helpful. Like I said, migrating from the old Z-Wave to the new Z-Wave JS, really not that bad of a process and pretty straightforward. Um, of course, we did run into some oddities with recovering that old lock from the new to the, or from the old to the new. Like I said, you may be best with something like a lock where it's using that secure inclusion to just go ahead and remove it and then re-add it and you should get back everything you're expecting to see. Of course, if you're starting fresh, go check out our other video uh, starting Z-Wave and Zigbee from scratch. Otherwise, I hope you all enjoyed this. Again, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks and we'll see you next time.